the first audio is not authentic in terms of some aspects, but they admitted that some of them were authentic. Now, you've had the benefit of a tape on the assumption that it's authentic. The members of the committee will have to internalize that tape and it is also transcribed and look at it. And that will give us the ideas as to what to do. First of all, do we bring all the I mean, stakeholders together with their lawyers for cross-examination and uh, cross-firing to take place? Whilst we listen attentively and later have, when they finish, then we'll have our turn. And then are there matters which should not come into the public domain because of national security implications? So we'll do long in-house or uh, uh, in-camera hearing. And then we make some good sense of it. So this is how we are going to go. We'll be guided strongly by the fact that this is not a simple exercise and it's not everything that should be fed to the general public who have implications for the nation. The Honorable Atacha is uh, chair of the committee, ad hoc committee of parliament that is investigating the leaked tape in which um, police officers together with Bugri Nabu um, are quote unquote plotting the removal of the Inspector General of Police, Dr. Akufu Dampare, uh, ostensibly because he will stand in the way of the NPP's election victory and needed to be removed. A lot of issues have come up. We're going to look at them right now. But let me share some of your messages. Mauli Tachi says, the attitude of Madam Jane Mensa and her, her co-chairman calls for national condemnation. We cannot allow four or seven individuals to break our democracy all in the name of autonomy uh, of power. Is the effect of that power not supposed to build uh, rather than to break? Um, Anan, Anan, is it Ananson? John says the impunity of the EC is very offensive. Derek Kofi, it's striking to think that an MPP general secretary is defending the decision of the electoral commissioner to embark on this limited voter registration in the manner it is seeking to do it. Prince Henry says, it is, is it not amazing that the only political party defending the electoral commission decision to carry out its limited registration exercise uh, only at the district capital is the NPP. Uh, I'm not sure the NPP has actually been in like a complete defense of the Electoral Commission. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so then you ask, is there something the NPP knows that many other Ghanaians don't know? And uh, on the Alan matter, Ahiaka Richard says, uh, sometimes you can lose the match but win the game. His withdrawal was apt and strategic for the bigger game. Which bigger game? <laughs> it's over. Um, Nana Ajiman says, man is tired. The betrayal is hard to bear. He can't witness the next phase of disgrace. Good he stepped out. Take care of yourself and grandchildren. Uh, Mawunya, uh, is it Mawunya Fia Quist says, uh, no matter how bad the odds are against you, you must never give up on your dreams. Amable Benson says, they have made Baumia an establishment candidate. No need to contest. Kwame Rauk says, the party already has a system candidate. All this, uh, these processes are mere formalities. It was a waste of time and resources running in this race. Whoever wins is very likely to lose the general elections anyway. Smooth Love says, One politician I have always admired, one who carries himself so well, he has left everything too early. Now it will be hard to even gain face. Alan sold his birthrights. Well, many don't disagree with you, uh, the way he carries himself and everything. 
uh, more presidential. But that's what you see <laughs> here in the national capital. The party's big brains voting in the national capital. 32 of them prefer someone else to him. Um, Henry, Harry Olufunwa Olufu says, good decision. Why compete in a contest that has clearly been in favor of an anointed candidate? Then the Papo Brown says, it surprises me that the MPP thinks Baumia, who is directly involved in this gross mismanagement of our economy, is a better candidate to present for the 2024 elections. Musa Abatoa in Asawase says, let's put ourselves in Alan's shoes. He is not treated fairly by the rank and file of the party because he had been promised in 2007 at Legon to allow Akufuado to go, which he will take over after him. It's his turn, and that's why they were using slogans like Edru, Edru Neso. Now, he's being uh, hoodwinked by using Machiavellian tactics to get Baumia to lead. Mind you, such decisions are collectively uh, and not solely. I wish Alan well. All right, thanks for your message. Uh, this one from Al Haj Suleiman. He says, um, Okay, there's a problem with our streaming. Please uh, let the technical team take care of that. He says, I don't think Alan's decision will affect the party in any way. I'm surprised that an experienced politician of his standing every now and then writes on very flimsy excuses to take an early shower to the disappointment of his supporters. If for nothing at all, he should have learned from the contest between Justin Kodia and John Buedu whether they were both non-establishment and establishment candidates, respectively. Kodia defied all odds and won. This presupposes that you can still beat the establishment if you do your homework well. The establishment cannot whip over 200,000 delegates in line. How can that be? Well, there are people who agree with uh, Alhaj uh, 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 Suleiman because they say when Alan was doing the walk thing, you know, the jogging thing they were doing, he had such crowds. So those crowds... They are not in the leaders. They are in the 200,000 who are going to vote. He says, I think Alan simply did what he did to save an impending embarrassment. Adai Nimo is my preferred candidate anyway. Okay, thank you. Let's see how far Adai Nimo uh, will go. And Jacob Osei uh independent presidential candidate, he says, political parties could not fight for Ghanaians to acquire Ghana card that can help them far better than voting card. That's the crux of thinking of partisan politicians, always thinking about how to get power to ruin the nation. Get power to ruin the nation power. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Uh, Dr. Park, your message is really long. Let me try and read just a portion of it for it. He says, Jean Mensah must understand that her job is to ensure that every Ghanaian citizen who has attained the voting age is given the opportunity to register and to vote. Unfortunately, she seems to relish doing the opposite. Chiefs, CSOs, religious groups, persons with disabilities and political parties, leaders, MPs and ordinary citizens have all called on the EC to decentralize the registration exercise to ensure that citizens are not disenfranchised. Yet the EC remains adamant. Who does Jen Mensah think she works for? So in whose interest is the EC working? Rigging elections isn't just about snatching ballot boxes. It includes voter suppression and disenfranchisement of eligible voters. We must resist this unreasonable and unlawful decision by the EC to restrict vote uh, centers for the upcoming limited voter registration exercise to their district offices. The EC must be compelled to do the needful. Well, you have gone to court. Some will tell you, uh, <laughs> like they say sometimes, it's not everything that you go to court. Because when you go to court, you are giving it, in the, in, the, in the high court, you are giving one person the opportunity to make that decision for you. And their discretion, uh, their interpretation of the law, 
may not suit you and you come and cry that it's biased judges. You go to the Supreme Court, maybe five judges. You have given the whole decision to them. If they take a decision and you don't like, what do you do? So sometimes it's not really about going to court. Now, the IGP's leak tape and the matters arising. Share your messages with us as well. And on that uh, issue too, we are asking a very simple question. The committee intends or proposes that it might invite the IGP because of the comments that are being made and the allegations against him that he's not managing the police service well, that there are many people who are against his kind of leadership. Uh, there are allegations about, uh, what's the name? Uh, Bugri Nabu having also lobbied for him to become the IGP, and as a result of that, he um, is giving him contracts in compensation. There has been tape in which that allegation is confirmed that contracts have been given to Bugri Nabu uh, to supply books to the police. Uh, there has been an allegation now that we understand that these are new evidence that the committee has. It's before it could use it, some people have already put those videos out where Bugri Nabu is accused of being on the payroll of the IGP, 10,000 Ghana cities a month, is it? And he says, yes, I am paid, but I am paid by the police service as an informant and not uh, because I have done anything for the IGP. You say IGP should not be invited, and why not? The suspensions that have happened, the Constitution is very clear that if they are giving testimony before a committee like that, you can't use that against them in a civil or criminal process. So what's going on? What do you think? First of all, that committee, this committee of parliament, the third year committee of parliament, is an ad hoc committee. Mm. Uh, to make it simpler, it's not a standing committee of parliament. Okay. Nor is it a select committee of parliament. Uh, an issue of national importance has arisen, and there is a need for parliament to understand these reasons and know how to deal with them. So when the committee was established, the committee was given its terms of reference. Mm. Because it's an animal committee. And what are the terms of reference? Establish the authenticity of the uh, leaked audio recording. Authenticity. Which they have already established so far. Just investigate the veracity of the conspiracy. Investigate. Which they have also established so far. Because the, those speaking on the tape have admitted these things. Okay. Investigate any other matter contained in the audio. In the audio. So it's not about what they have said at the hearing. Any other matter contained in the audio mm. make recommendations where appropriate, including sanctions. If an accusation is made that he is the architect of the recording, does that qualify? The terms are clear. You see, when a committee of the nature that is probing this issue now takes on many issues. The remit of the committee now becomes at large. I think you should respond to my question directly. <laughs> Those who have come, yes. they confirm that they are the voices on the audio. Yes. And then they say that the original audio is with the IGP. He has it. Yes. And they have said that it's the IGP who commissioned the recording. But that's, that's, is that relevant for the committee? That's, that's, an, that's an allegation. What is relevant is that they established, one, that that tape is authentic, except that portions of it have been doctored. So its authenticity has been established. Do you believe in those claims that portions have been doctored? I don't even believe in them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in them. And two, so the competition of NLA is where we are now. Mm. And two, 
the veracity of the conspiracy has been established beyond doubt. Uh, Alex Bensa says, look, it's not today that I started lobbying for that position. And I went to Bukurunabu. Uh, uh, Asari says, look, even Bukurunabu directed us to Malams. Conspiracy has been established and all met for one purpose. That's the definition of conspiracy. For a single purpose. To plot the removal of the IGP. There's no basis to invite him. He's not part of the elite team. I'm just reading the terms of reference. I'm just reading that. I mean, it's a red herring, giant red herring. And if they invite the IGP, the committee will finish its work. Leave it. Many matters have come. Very serious, in my view. We have just been talking about electoral commission. Mm. We've been speaking about Alan Chiramente. At the basis of our discussion here is the right of the individual to determine who leads him. Someone says that in 2024, our right to determine who leads this country doesn't matter. And that he, if made IGP, can manipulate the outcome of the elections. That is subversive in the list. It's subversive. And he says that without regret. Mm. Now, that is also threatening the security of the state. Even when that was done on a smaller scale, which will be disputed, eight people lost their lives. Now, the only reason why someone says I should be IGP is that I have the panacea, I have the magic wand to make sure that breaking the eight is possible and that the city IGP cannot help you break the eight. I mean, don't, don't you think that is very serious for even... And, and sometimes, sometimes, that's so, why so, when I was at Legon, mm -hmm. my lecturer said that that's why they take time in getting people into the faculty room. I can't imagine how a lawyer mm. can think this way. Do you think that is subversive? Then you are a professional policeman. You are in a bureaucracy. And you know that a bureaucracy has it's, attributes. He's a very young lawyer, though. Yes, but, yeah. but whatever. Hmm. Uh, we, are, we are at the faculty. <laughs> <laughs> you are at the faculty. No, you can't think that way. It's subversive. Now, you, you, are, you are in a bureaucracy, and you know that a bureaucracy has certain qualities, certain characteristics. You know they have an interest. All bureaucracies, for the police, their interest is to protect life and property, or maintain law and order, or through the maintenance of law and order. That's what they stand for. Mm. And you also know that they have values. And their values have been captured so subtly in their, in their motto. Mm. Service with integrity. <laughs> you know that. And you're a lawyer. What do they, I mean, what does that mean to you? I mean, it, it is clearly lowering the police in the estimation of reasonable thinking men. If some officers of the police can go to conspire for the removal of the top most guy. Because... Again, as far as you are concerned, the committee is done. It's, 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 uh, it's finished. I mean, you just I, go and I, write his report. Oh, oh Samson, no, it's not me. It's the terms of reference. Mm. Atacha is now embarked on a frolic of his own. Mm. So, so the, the, the report, uh, let's say they haven't said positively that they will invite him. They said they've also got things, further evidence and things, and because the IGP is being it's mentioned, part, they may bring uh, him. They said they're, may. They're lawyers. Mm. It's a part of their terms of reference. Okay. You, you are saying that <laughs> in this process, yes. if they stumble on even more serious information... What they need to do is to go to Parliament for Parliament to include that in their terms of reference. Okay. Because they will be acting out mm. of their terms of reference. Okay. The question I've been asking is... What exactly can this committee do? Yeah, if so the report, what would they say? They, they would say, well, to, they have established. So they will 
to write a brief history how the referral was done to them, how the committee yeah. was constituted. It's authentic. The people have admitted it. Yes. They've so admitted plotting to remove him because somebody wanted to become an ID. And, and so what? And they evaluate the And then what? And their recommendations. What, what would they recommend? They, they can recommend sanctions. Sanctions? Yes. They recommend to who? To, to the parliament. The parliament will direct it to the attorney general or the minister of interior, dependent. They can recommend some. Okay. Yes. Which could include sucking them. Sucking them from their police service. All oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, in the meantime, mm. the police service act itself mm. and their CI mm. is very clear. Yes. That if you are an office and you engage in activities outside your police duties, which will bring you into political controversy. Yes, yeah damaging the reputation of the service you are not allowed to do that it is a misconduct gross misconduct right <laughs> yes. on the basis of that yes. the police is seeking to discipline them so it must set up a disciplinary committee so it says he intended to do that then so they issued a statement and said uh, this was the second one following the interdiction of uh, cop mr george alex mensa superintendent mr emmanuel eric jb and superintendent uh, Mr. George Lysander Asari, in connection with the leaked audio tape, the police administration would commence disciplinary proceedings into their conduct upon completion of the ongoing probe by Parliament. In order not to prejudice the ongoing probe, the police administration has suspended their interdiction. So there was a first release saying that they had been interdicted, they should hand over That's all okay. Don't you property. That? Don't you say that it was weird? Mm. The leak tape came up long ago. We all had opportunity to comment on it. So the police would have heard it anyway. They waited until Parliament set up a committee. The committee starts work. And in the middle of the work of the committee, you are interdicting this. It's prejudicial. Mm. You can't do that. Somebody said that could be contempt of parliament. No, it's even prejudicial. I mean, you can't do that. Two things. That's why when one institution is handling a matter, another institution will have to wait okay. for that matter to be completed before that institution takes up any mm. aspect of that matter. Right. So, so no. I, I mean, I, when they issued that, I said, no, but you can't do this. So it didn't come to me as a surprise. Some said because it involves the IGP himself. But we have been made to understand, which is naturally the natural thing that would have happened is that he will not be part of the uh, disciplinary process or any decision that will be taken against them because this is about him. And so we have been told that he won't do it, that. So he will recuse it, himself. I just hate to hear such excuses. It involves the IGP itself. This is about the police service. Mm. It's not about the IGP. It's the conduct of seven policemen that have attracted the attention of the police. And the police have got rules. So the rules are being given effect to. It's not a person. They are saying he lobbied to become who he is and lobbied also through this person. If somebody else goes to that person to lobby, what's the offense? Why are you wasting our time but in this it, thing? Because it, his was not recorded. It's wrong to lobby? This was not recorded. Don't they lobby? We don't know what he said. They all lobby. So what no, is wrong? No, we don't know what he said. So what's wrong with lobbying? No, what, what, what is wrong is it, it came out in the tape recorded. Lobbying and maligning and somebody. They, it they happens. Have, and, they, and they have been lobbying all over. Mm. They have been lobbying all over. The police have been lobbying all over. Mm. Even two days ago, me and a private citizen, somebody was lobbying me that when we come to power, he wants to go to a police college. Okay. <laughs> So, so, so they well, all along. Yes. Well, I sit here without any such uh, powers, <laughs> but you can't imagine the number of people who get to me asking <laughs> what they think I can do. Do. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right. So, so let, let, let's 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 hear let's hear from um, uh, Theodore. Theodore, what what do you make of these developments, and do you agree that? The, the committee's work is almost done. They shouldn't bring in the IGP because that would be diversionary. And uh, the things that are being confirmed about the accusations against the IGP also is unnecessary. Yeah, Theodore. Please unmute your mic.
I, I think, with respect, we are ignoring a huge elephant in the room. You know, we're beginning to see a pattern, and the pattern is this. The EC limits the number of uh, stations for people to exercise their franchise, i.e. to be able to register. And then on the back foot, you hear somebody say, Sorry. I will help you. Sorry. I will help you. Sorry. We, we, help we have moved on. Yes, I, I, I just want to make a connection between the two. Okay, okay, I get and that. Then, mm. And then on, the, on, a, on another side, you hear somebody say, if you make me IDP, my role and my mission will be to intimidate people and break the age. Mm -hmm. All right? So we have a serious issue which goes to the fundamental basis of our democracy. And, and, and this is way more important mm -hmm. than whether uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, uh, the other matters, although not, uh, I'm not dismissing the IDP issue, but I want us to focus on that. Here are machinations to limit the exercise and the constitutional rights of fellow Ghanaians across the nation, either by brute force or by uh, uh, Machiavellian tactics. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you have somebody like Panadier Japan complaining about internal elections, and you have somebody like uh, 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 Alan Samatin complaining about internal elections. Okay, so we are beginning to see a pattern which is dangerous for our democracy in this country. Okay, internally, people are complaining, 25%. Those two people want 25% of the, the vote. And then you have an individual who says, I will help you intimidate so that the other party cannot win. And then on the same slide, you have somebody saying, we will limit the center so that you have to travel 80 miles to register so that you can uh, be put on the electoral roll. Come on, guys. Let's open our eyes because we are treading a very dangerous path. Now to come to the issue of um, our Tatians committee. What are the what were the 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 um, uh, 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 dare I say it? What was it that you was required in terms of reference of the committee? Have those been met? And unequivocally, they have. Anything going beyond that may be considered a fitting exercise, and it may be permitted to an extent, but now we ought to be wrapping up, okay? There's no uh, a dispute uh, that people are lobbying, mm. and, and frankly, it is okay to lobby. There is no dispute that uh, people are being paid, question mark. But uh, for me, what sticks in the gut is give me that role, and that the consideration is I will help you win. I, I, is it is it that individual, uh, uh, that individual or, or is, is or, it is it doing justice to this matter if all that the committee will do is to say the voices on the tape those who are public officers they are the only ones who should suffer any you know punishment is that doing justice to what you say is very serious like that on that tape? You see, you, 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 you take your victim as you find, as you find, <laughs> you take your victim as you find him or her. Yeah. You take your terms of reference, God bless them, as you are given. And you proceed with what you've got. This way leads on to where, or we go down a rabbit hole, and we are also able to uncover other conspiracies, then we will deal with them as such. But right now, in front of us, what we have is a tacit admission that there was conspiracy, there was lobbying, there is taking of money, and more importantly, there's a conspiracy to disenfranchise the members of the public, Ghanaians, mm. fellow mm. Ghanaians. Okay. Of the, right. let, let me let me go to let me go to Theo. Let me go to Tio now. Uh, Tio, from, from what 
you know, uh, Inusa and Theodore have spoken about agree that the committee practically is done with its work. Would you then say that the committee's members are wasting our ears, they are wasting our time? Because to be frank with you, you hear some of them, they are just doing the political equalization game there. They are using that platform to sort of sanitize one party or dirty the, next, the other party depending on which witness they are talking to and so on. So they should close shop and uh, give us a report. Yeah, well, we are waiting for the report. Um, I think there were some <laughs> issues with my sound earlier, so I, I hope this is much better um, now. Yes. But the point is, what were the terms of the reference of the committee, and have they been met? Largely, we all agree that that has been met. So let's just submit the report, and then we will take the, the follow-on actions um, as, as needed. But my big worry in all of this, which is the point that Theodore also has made, is look in all of these um contestations and things we're watching on tv it shows you the deep partisanship and the extent to which almost all of the key institutions in this country including the constitutionally mandated mandated ones have all been you know infested with this idea of you know the partisanship ndc mpp and to have you know a senior police officer on tape, make serious, you know, uh, allegations. We we'll, we'll ask that question about the judges. You remember that's part of the discussion here. Uh, even though it doesn't appear, we may have time to do that. But if we don't, we can uh, keep that for the next we, we week. Them, but, but I think that is really one of the big things that we, we should take away from all of this. Beyond the, the treachery and the conspiracy to get the IGP out, the idea that you know somebody who's connected or affiliated to one party can come in and use the instrument and institution to you know favor one side against the broader collective will of Ghanaians. That for me is a very serious national security issue that goes to the heart of the constitutionalism that we're practicing. So so the the well, that's actually needless. So let me move to Haruna and, and just ask what your, your, your position will also be. This matter should end here. Um, all the other matters that are being brought up, we should leave all of that. Uh, Samson, um, uh, uh, I think that on, I needed to have been given some time to speak when it was on the MPP issues. My senior brother in the studio how all the time to speak and then garnish all the food. Uh, Haruna, Haruna, we are talking, we are now talking about the leak yeah, tape. I, I know, yeah. I know, I know, Samson. I'm yes. just saying that I needed to have enough time uh, to prevent my senior brother from garnishing from food that uh, was prepared in our party. And uh, just for me to make some few clarification and move on, uh, that Unfortunately, I have very limited time, and if you go on some other subjects, you may lose your opportunity to speak to other, other subjects. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the, the three points have been mentioned about the authenticity, the, the terms of reference that is given them, the veracity, and any other matter that is contained in the audio. For me, my position is that uh, if the committee deems it fit on the third item, that is the uh, any other matter that is contained in the audio, I think that they can invite the IGP to also put out his side of the story. Uh, in your media ethics, if somebody's name is mentioned on a particular item, what you do is to invite the person to hear the side, uh, the, 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 his side of the story, or in any other matter. The, 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 ethics, the ethics are that if you are mentioning someone and there, is not be, there will not be an opportunity for them to speak, I don't even allow you to mention them. Yeah, so now in this case, the person's name has been mentioned severally. He has been accused. He's told that he's the one who recorded it and he has the original audio. All these matters. I think that the committee, to be fair, has to invite the IGP because it may, it may be true and it may be not true. So I think that the IGP uh, should be invited to clear uh, 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 his side of the story so that at least in Parliament receiving the report, we'll see that there is some level of fairness, there is some level of representation. So for me, I don't agree with the fact that the IGP should not be invited.
Okay. But in the meantime, what should we do about the further leaks that suggest some wrongdoing, at least? Buri Nabu has made some admissions in the new leaked uh, audios. What should happen to that? Uh, if the new audios, if or the videos that is there, if it falls within the terms of reference, and if it is not illegal, or if the, the, the committee has the power to look at them, I think that the committee can look. But if the committee doesn't, this should be added as appendix uh, to the report that is going to parliament, and parliament will so look at it. But what I see afterwards here is that there should be a very competent commission that is put in place, that is headed by many security uh, 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 experts. But a judge, a judge must be put as a chairperson for this particular committee, an extended committee that will look at this particular matter. This matter is bordering, is bordering on the security of this country. Mm. My security, your security, and everybody's security. So we need to, to look at this particular matter and get to the bottom of it, not to end it at the, 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 the parliamentary committee level. Okay. Uh, so I'm going for a break, but uh, by your, your law, mm. uh, once it is done, then the police can also do their investigation. Well, can do their investigation. So if there is a recommendation that says, get them, uh, push them off their ship, that, that what would they have to be investigating the, again? The, the recommendation from the parliament through the attorney general or the minister will supersede the police council. That's why the present action is premature. It's premature. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the constitution declares emphatically, unequivocally, in Article 121, Clause 4, that an answer by a person to a question put by parliament shall not be admissible in evidence, evidence. against him yeah, in do. any civil or criminal proceedings yeah. out of parliament yeah. except proceedings for perjury brought under the criminal law yeah. so everything they say there unless they have told the lie told them to tell lies if we tell lies we punish you <laughs> nah, that's all <laughs> except that they are immune they are immune <laughs> yeah. they are getting almost the immunity that's why they are speaking the way they are speaking you, you don't see it okay oh, yeah. okay all right, we take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs>